Welcome back, everybody, to Pro League here. We are in the midst of the Grand Playoff for 2015. It is round two, CJ Antis versus the Jin Air Green Wings. And I'm here, Valdez, with me joined is Moonblade and Wolf. How are you guys? I'm doing great. I really feel like CJ is going to have to pull out a miracle today, though, to take out Jin Air. Jin Air, insanely favored, especially after their win versus KT and also their domination yesterday as well. Yeah, they're looking very strong, very well-rounded with a lot of their players. Uh, CJ, they, they really brought it to the last game. They were looking fantastic, but just Jin Air a little bit more prepared, especially with the player Rogue. Today, though, I mean, I feel like we're going into Jin Air territory. They're going to be heavily favored in this kind of match style. I'd have to agree with you there. I mean, we talked a little bit about how Hero and Biel definitely strong opponents for the Jin Air players on the CJ side. But Jin Air, as I said yesterday, they've got so many of these players that are peaking at the exact right time. Rogue is doing insanely well. SOS gets an all kill against KT. And uh, also, Maru is also going to be fantastic. He's not uh, too whenever. far behind. Yeah, you know, he's getting better and better. He's evolving his style and uh, incorporating more mech play as well. So yeah, yeah, everyone's kind of coming in form at the right time. I feel like, um, you know, if Yell was not slumping right now, and if Hero uh, had not had just a, an off loss there in Game 7 yesterday, I would say this format really favors CJ, but because their two star players are not in form right now, and everyone on Jinner seems to be, with maybe the exception of, like, Symbol, uh, you know, we even saw a really cool build out of Cure yesterday. If you just look at the lineup of Jinner, they look unbeatable right now, and in fact, if they win today, I think they've got a good shot of maybe even potentially upsetting SK. SKT needs to be looking at this and studying already right now both these teams, but especially Jin Air at this moment in time. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you there. Jin Air, I feel like, is the one team that could actually go in and possibly go for that upset, especially just on that one day, the Grand Finals. Who knows? Maybe, you know, the SKT players, they haven't been playing every week as Jin Air has been, essentially practicing, getting ready you know, being on the on the big stage, getting rid of those nerves and just getting their endurance up. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, look for example of KT. They went on holidays before they had their first match of the postseason, mm -hmm. and they did horribly. Same thing could happen to SKT, though. I feel like SKT is a little bit more strict maybe in their practice. They, they won't let that yeah. kind of thing happen this time. Yeah, regardless of what happens, whoever wins here today, I feel like SKT has a depth in their lineup that's so strong that you go into a best of seven finals, they're not going to have any players that are fillers, whereas some of these other teams like Jin Air and CJ in this entry format do have a few players that kind of go in hoping to get that yeah. one best of one win, but it seems unlikely, you know? Definitely with that entry format. You know, going into the all kill here, we're going to take a look, look at the maps as well. Uh, each team can only use four players for this, essentially, so they have to choose wisely, and CJ has already picked Trust for their first match, which is kind of interesting as well. Yeah, that's really out there, Trust. Uh, a play we just we had we didn't see yesterday. We very rarely ever see throughout the season again. Maybe he's been preparing for this, maybe ready for this kind of map, this kind of player, Cure. Most likely gonna be a Terran on this map. It makes sense, but I'm still I'm questioning it. I'm I'm, I'm very confident Cure is gonna do well. well. We'll see what happens with Cure. You know, he had a really cool style yesterday that he showed us in TVT, just not able to get the win at the end of all things. Here's, of course, some of that same data, but this time, of course, about the all-kill format. You can see that Jinair Green Wings is much more successful overall. They've also played five more total matches than C. Dantas has. Yep. Kind of interesting. I was thinking, you know, maybe Jinair going with a 4-2 here, and C. Dantas has gone 2-5 and five in 4-2 you know, victories and losses there. And now we're going to take a look at the multi-kill data. SOS up at the top there, two uh, all kills. Maru has gotten one. And nothing for CJ. So yeah. They haven't got it once. Bial the closest with three kills. Surprisingly, Hero only has had two kills in a row. I could say a lot coming into today. And, uh, I mean, looking at those two plays as well, Bial not playing well. And Hero very predictable in this kind of situation. It's somewhat worrisome to see that Bial and Hero at the top here, there's a good thing. CJ Antis has never had, ever, in StarCraft II, an all-kill. It's a bit worrisome going into today's format. Uh, you can see uh, the key players for victory here, who is doing the best, and uh, and how does you know how do they stack up against their opponent's best players. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting because this really does speak volumes about where CJ Antis is right now. With Biel on his big slump, uh, they needed him to step up because he is their best player against Jyn Arendt. If he doesn't step up, I, I can't see them having too good of a chance here in this series. Yeah, I mean, it, it almost sounds like we're giving CJ 
this sort of like dark, cynical outlook going into today. But if you look at their matches last week, or rather uh, just yesterday and also the weeks before leading into round four, they just looked very slumpy. You know, they did not look like a team that belongs in the in the grand postseason right now. Well, taking a look at the viewpoints here, Jin Air has been strong in the all kill format. Very true. CJ has defeated Jin Air before. So, you know, they, they've done it before, but. Uh, maybe not uh, all too often. And at the end there, it said also, when we get into the series over the course of, you know, one week where we get into the grand playoffs where there's a, a total of three days possible, whenever the team wins the first day, they have a 76% chance to take it all. So that's already crazy. Jinner off to a great start. I guess there's only one day between the matches, so there's a lot of uh, momentum carrying into day number two here, which makes a lot of sense. And we could very well see the same today. Absolutely. I'm always a big fan and a big uh, scholar of, of looking at those kind of stats and seeing who wins game one in the best of seven, who wins game one in the best of three and in a series like this. I think the momentum is the biggest thing because day one is the day you have the most time to prepare for. You've got time since Friday and those stats go all the way back as far as StarCraft 1, like Brood War best of three stats. Mm, yeah, that is crazy. Uh, as we look at the events, I mean, we could also talk about the first match and also the maps. I feel like that's uh, the mm. big storyline that we kind of haven't touched on yet, and we're not going to get a chance to before this actually starts up. But uh, it's interesting that we see a Terran player come out. Oh, it, it makes sense, actually, that a Terran player comes out on Viney Research Station and a Protoss mm. for CJ, uh, considering the maps after that, like Iron Fortress. Then it goes to Coder and Echo. I feel like Terran makes a lot of sense in this, yeah. this list of maps, Secure. If he can get that first win, he's going to have a lot of momentum behind that. Whereas Trust, I don't know where he goes from first win. Yeah, and we talked about this before, that Trust is an interesting pick. After they had to use six players yesterday, and he was not one of the six. And uh, he is given this chance here, and the maps don't even favor him. So yeah. we keep talking about this dark, cynical outlook for CJ's future, especially for today. It's kind of, you know, coming all together. It just seems that way, right? But let's see what they can do. We have seen upsets happen in this league before. I mean, hell, <laughs> SOS got a reverse all kill last week on day two. So anything can happen. I feel like Trust is going to have to show us one of those wonderful, crazy best of one builds. Kind of like what we saw from uh, Sora yesterday in PvP. Yep, certainly so. Well, here he is, Trust. He's played one game this year. Wow. Besides mm. that, I mean, he's just been playing a ton of online qualifiers and not really finding success anywhere else. He's 1-5 in all-time in Pro League as well, including stats from previous seasons. He's definitely not a player that CJ relies upon almost ever. Yeah. And that's a, a very interesting place to put him in as well on the first game. A lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff is on the line for this one player to go up against Kira, a guy who is very prepared, he has a ton of experience in the booth, and he is a player that Jinner relies on all the time. You know what? He looked great yesterday despite losing his match. He had a very unique style in TVT, and, and he, he had a great game with it too. So I, I came today looking at it. At a, he should be pretty confident still, and he's playing great. Yeah, uh, You know, I, I give some hope, on the other hand, to uh, Trust. You know, one of these Protoss snipers got the Protoss brothers in the house. You know, you've got Sora, you've got Hush to talk to to kind of figure this one out. I, I have to give the edge here to Trust because I don't, there's not enough information to see. Whereas in recent times, Cure has been struggling, even with that loss yesterday, you know, even with how well he played yesterday with that loss. I cannot give him my favor here. I have to give a slight edge to Trust going to this best of one because I don't think that Coach Park would rely on him the same way he relied on Sora yesterday if he didn't have a plan. It's going to be a close one, though, and I don't take this decision lightly. It's like I'm really on the fence about it. I would agree with you there. I think if Trust takes this one, he's got to have a crazy build for the game number one. But, guys, let's jump into that game number one right now on Bonnie Research Station. Here in the north, in the yellow for CJ Entis, the Protoss player, he is Trust. You got to win today so we can see you tomorrow. That sign says down to the bottom at the six o'clock position in green. It is Cure for Jenner Green Wings. 
taking a narrow defeat yesterday, just building a unique composition, mostly harassment focused. Ooh. Get an all kill and go to the finals. We'll all go. right, all right. Can you do it, Cure? Well, look at this. Oh, starting off a little cheeky. Where will you be going? This looks like perhaps a proxy Reaper. I think mm. so. It went before the depot, and it's going solo. It's going YOLO. Oh, well, well, there's a second one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, we'll just get it right into it here. This is a really cool play because Boy, you dirty boy. Kira is expecting probably the same as we are that Trust is going to do something unique and out there, out of the box. And if he just gets proxied, then that can ruin everything. That's going to ruin everything. And I wonder if this is a stylistic sort of cheese. Like, they know what Trust is, how he plays. And from this reason alone, it's maybe a reason why Trust never gets playtime is he, he has this very one-dimensional sort of style. So let's go for a cheese here in, in game one. That's a good point because, you know, we only have the information of watching broadcasts and matches, looking at information like stats that are out there. But, you know, some of these Korean players, especially with the new resources to look up barcodes uh, for Koreans, probably know when they play against this guy on the ladder, how he plays on the ladder. Um, and people talk, you know, people talk about each other's styles. You hear rumors. Even if there's not a VOD to study, there's things that you can you can get information. Yeah, you have a team of players that are playing ladder all the time, and nearly everyone has every other person's barcode figured out, so I'm sure there's a lot of experience, especially in ladder, against Trust. Also, this is just a great build in this kind of situation for Kira. It's game number one. You wouldn't expect him to go for something this risky, and it's against a, a player that you wouldn't consider a very strong player, so it has a better chance of working out. And even if it doesn't work out all so well, you can kind of transition, maybe play from behind against someone like Truss. So I, I do like the position that Cure has put himself in with this build. Okay, he's going to bunker the low ground, bring a few more SCVs. But oh, man. This is smart because if he bunkered the main, there is vision. And there's a Zealot on the way already. It's going to be out in just a second as well. Will he cancel it, though? Yeah, let's see. If he cancels it, it's bad news. He really needs it. Oh. I think he's going to cancel it. There he it does. Is. Canceled. Oh, my God. He gets the Nexus down and says, what a disaster situation to stop things off to CJ. Seconds later, the SCV starts making a bunker in the main, and the Marines come in. He's got a Chrono Boost out of Mothership Core now. Oh. But he's got nothing else. Yeah, he doesn't. He really doesn't. He sees that bunker on the low ground, and he knows Bad that timing. He, yeah, he knows he can't actually attack. If he's going to decide to now anyways. He does not have enough gas, mind you, for a Stalker. Now he does, and he is going to make it. He needs to kill these SCVs, but there's just way too many of them. That bunker will certainly finish. He's still got an SCV uh, on it. This could be something. This could be something. Trying to get the surround here, but there is that bunker. It's done, and Marvel Marines are coming out. He cannot lose the mothership for oh, and he might. It. Oh, down it goes, and that is game over, ladies and gentlemen, here in this starting match. What a disaster situation. Way over Zelt with that Mothership Core as well. That was his only hope, you know, get a photo and overcharge. One stalk is not going to do the trick. Never. And he's already down in workers, plus the fact that uh, Cure has mules. And this stalker micro oh, is made worse man. by the fact that he's tight walled that. That's going to be game over here. All the probes are going to go down, and Trust can't seem to believe it, but that's going to be it. GG. GG. <laughs> Cure. Crazy build, but he secures a win to start off the day. Yeah, beautiful start for Jin Air. Uh, they came into it feeling confident, I'm sure, and they had such a great lead on Trust. This is a terrible start for CJ. They made they took a gamble on Trust. You know, he didn't do anything wrong in this game. It's just that this build is so uncommon, so unpopular these days. And he hit it really well, and he had that low ground bunker. If the low ground bunker wasn't there, it would have been a different story. Because the building placement is designed not only to stop Elian run by, because it was a tight wall, but also gives vision of the area where we'd normally bunker. The low ground bunker meant the pro pull would not stop the first bunker from going up without too many losses. He also messed up because he didn't get 50 gas for that, for that stalker, so the stalker was delayed. The mothership core control as well was a bit messed up. It was very messy, flying over the bunker. Like yeah, he was obviously panicking a bit there. He, as you said before, very uncommon build, and the timing from Cure as well. It's almost like he knew down in the second when the Zealot was going to be canceled, and that's the second that he walked up the ramp and started making a bunker. So. Very nicely prepared build for Cure, and he's going into Iron Fortress. So he is. This is fantastic. This is what we were talking about with these maps. Now, I wonder who they're going to send out now. I think it could be Byung, to be honest, because I don't know if they really want to send out someone like Biel this early. And I don't think we'll see a Protoss on Iron Fortress. I don't think so either. Uh, the Protosses we could see are either Hero or the kind of snipe-oriented uh, Protosses, right? So 
I don't think you want to send a player like that out on a four player map. I think Byung is definitely your best choice, your best bet. TVT it, try to win a mech game. We already saw the same thing occur yesterday. Yeah, on the same map as well. So I think Byung is definitely your pick here. Yell would be an interesting choice. I don't think you can send out Hero, as you guys have echoed. Uh, but let's see what CJ wants to do here. Yeah. Let's see if they have a sniper prepared for Cure. I'm sure, well, they had a whole night to kind of sit down and think about who they're going to take, uh, who they're going to bring out if this player fails. So yeah, we'll see. But I, I think it has to be on, right? Yeah. I have to agree. For the maps that come after it as well, I mean, Coda, Echo, Terraform, you got a lot of maps that Young can play on. Yeah, I don't think you want to send Biel out this early.